Let's talk about blockchain-based domains. This is not something of the future, it's actually already happening and this is going to be the topic of today's episode of Crypto Corner. I'm joined by the co-founder of that service who is going to jump in a few seconds and he's going to answer all of my questions. These are going to be decentralized, they're going to be also very private and secure. You do not have to reveal any information, any sensitive data about yourself. And most importantly, there will be censorship resistant. But what is really cool about that is that you will be able to link your cryptocurrency wallets to that domain name so that the domain name will not only be your website that is on your business card, but it will also be your cryptocurrency wallet. So if you want someone, if, if you have a customer, let's say that is uh, using your services, they will be able to send you the payment in Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin and whatever other cryptocurrencies they will allow later on down the line directly to that website name that you have. So once you secure your branded website name, it will also be your wallet. This is what we're going to be discussing in this video. Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Crypto Corner. This time we're going to be discussing a new service offering domain names and I'm joined here by Brad who is the co-founder of Unstoppable Domains. He's going to be answering my questions. Um, this is a brand new domain service that is yet to be launched uh, very soon, I believe in June. And um, the difference is that it will be offering blockchain based domain names and um, and now we're going to find out what does that entail and what are the differences between a blockchain based domain and a regular domain that you're buying from a centralized company uh, thank you brad for joining me welcome to this uh, call how are you doing i'm great thanks a lot for having me my pleasure now um First, let's start with a little bit about yourself and then we're going to move into the, the service that you are offering and uh, what is unique about it. Sure. So my background, I am a, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm from, uh, from Atlanta. Uh, I was originally started uh, real estate companies and my co-founder uh, of maybe 15 years now is uh, the CEO of Unstoppable Domains, Matt Gould. Uh, and we uh, moved out to San Francisco together. I spent the past uh, six years uh, working on a company called Talkable, which is a referral marketing software company uh, selling software to uh, e-commerce companies. Uh, so I hired a new CEO for that business in the middle of to take a little bit of time off and then uh, go full-time crypto. Uh, I was also the first investor in Unstoppable Domains uh, back in January of 2018, which was uh, right when it started, and uh, joined full-time to focus on uh, uh, essentially revenue in October. Right. Well, that's great. So Unstoppable Domains has been going on for, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, just over a year. You said uh, January 2018. Uh, this is when um, you started building this um, service, or this is when you uh, the concept was born. Started building a, a prototype, and uh, then started working on uh, .zil in October of 2018. Right. Well, .zil is basically the extension of these domains, and this is because you are using the Zilliqa blockchain, which is a, a blockchain that supports smart contracts and building decentralized applications scalable uh, so tell us about the choice to use that blockchain you are partners with them I believe is that correct yeah I, I think that um, the, the thing that the thing though about about blockchains in general kind of like which blockchain your domain uh, lives on will probably be one of those things that developers are more interested in in than consumers. Uh, ultimately, from us, uh, you would likely see uh, blockchain domains uh, on more than one blockchain. Right. Um, and with uh, more blockchains coming uh, later on, blockchain based domains, um, would you have um, any sort of um, cooperation with them? Are you going to be working with? other uh, blockchain domains as well or 
are you just strictly .zill? Uh, .zill is our first extension. We actually started our first, uh, our prototype was on uh, .eth, uh, which was created by the Ethereum Foundation um, because uh, that was sort of the, that was sort of one of the initial models. Uh, and one of the things that we realized was uh, that what you really need it for your blockchain domain is you need to be able to attach all of your cryptocurrency addresses to one. Uh, so you as the user aren't even really going to care which blockchain it's on. You're going to add all of your crypto addresses, your Bitcoin address, your Ethereum address, your Litecoin address, everything to your .zill domain. And now you as the user are going to pay using whatever cryptocurrency you want. So the fact that the .zill domain lives on the Zillica blockchain is kind of more like a, a detail that's not as important to you. If that makes any sense, uh, and and the reason why this all this all works is because if you put uh, all that we're really doing is so you use a blockchain domain for, for essentially two two things uh, to enable uh, to enable easy payments by replacing your crypto addresses with human readable names uh, and for uncensorable websites. In both of those cases, all you're doing is looking up information on a blockchain, and that's public. So we're basically making it so wallets can easily look up on the blockchain and say, okay, uh, for this domain, it's this address. Replace brad.zill with brad's Bitcoin address. Um, the fact that that information is on the Zillica blockchain is like a detail. Right. Yeah, I think uh, really the unique uh, selling proposition here is the fact that you can cast, you can have your custom uh, domain name that will be used as a wallet as well. Um, you, and currently you can link a few different cryptocurrency wallets to that domain name. Is that correct? Yeah. So you, you can have, let's say I want to have ojjordan.zil and someone wants to send me Bitcoin or Ethereum or Litecoin, for instance, I can send them that name, domain name, and this is my wallet address at the same time. Now, at the point of sending that cryptocurrency, it will direct it to the wallet that is specifically for that cryptocurrency, if it's Bitcoin or if it's Ethereum or something else. Um, how many different wallets can I link to one domain name? There's technically no limit. So our goal is to onboard every cryptocurrency. And what that would mean is to have wallets that support every cryptocurrency, at least one wallet and hopefully more, uh, that support every cryptocurrency that are integrating our, uh, our library. Yeah, well, that's, that's really great. I know that um, many people are finding it quite intimidating when they have to work with um, the long alphanumerical addresses of the current wallets that we have. Um, not that this is really the reason why people are not getting involved with crypto, but it's definitely one of the things that <clears throat> for people who are new in the space, it is off-putting. You know, it, it seems a little bit complicated, elaborate. Also, there's been many times when mistakes are happening when you're copying and pasting or when you're scanning QR codes. Um, recently, last year, I think I reported on it, there was a um, some sort of a bug found where when you're scanning QR codes, sometimes you can get uh, the address messed up and uh, people, you know, sending cryptocurrency to a different wallet rather than the one they are intending to. So hopefully, this will be avoided with having your own domain name set up and linked to your wallet. Um, what about subdomains? Uh, I, I know that someone was asking uh, in my group that, um, you know, are they being able to use different subdomains for the different wallets that they have? So that if someone is to send you Ethereum and another person is to send you Bitcoin, you could actually um, allocate two different subdomains to that wallet. You, you can have uh, John BTC dot then your domain name dot zero and then you have John F dot your domain name dot zero. Is that um, something that could be added or are they going to be separate domains that you have to buy? Uh, yeah, you could have subdomains. Uh, I think I guess the point is is that you wouldn't need to specify that information. Um, because in, in this paradigm, what, one of the things so you, 
the, the two things you get out of payments are, not only do you not need to tell me your 40 character Ethereum address anymore, you don't even need to tell me which crypto you want because your domain is already preloaded with the ones that you accept. So you accept Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, you don't need to tell me which one you want, I can just go ahead and pay you. Um, so it's, it's kind of taking away two of these questions that you might have. Uh, what's my address and which one do I want? So I don't know that you would need to call it out that way. Maybe you would actually still, maybe you would have a subdomain like that just so you could indicate to somebody that you wanted them to pay you an ETH, for example. Um, yes. That might, that... There's probably other ways that you could indicate that other than the subdomain that might be a little simpler. Um, so that might not be the, that might not be the implementation, but I, I guess, you know, from a bigger perspective, can you add subdomains? Yeah. Yeah, totally. And um, also another thing is that uh, I saw a lot of uh, fellow YouTubers promoting um, this service as a way for you to go and buy some of the uh, popular domains and perhaps later on sell them at a higher price. Uh, that is the kind of speculative uh, initiative that many people were doing back in the dot-com uh, bubble era. And, uh, you know, many um, even trademarked subdomains were bought by people who were not really associated with these companies and later there were many um, you know cases where they were even had to be taken to court in order to let go of that uh, trademarked domain i know that you have already put in place uh, for the most um, popular names and, and trademark names it, it there will be an auction as well um, but also i noticed that uh, in your faq section you say that uh, once you go live whoever acquires that domain, it will be theirs. So let's elaborate a little bit on that. How is this going to work? Let's say I am, um, you know, CEO of Coca-Cola and someone else buys that domain name. What rights would I have to claim that domain name later if that service becomes much more popular and I only find out about it two or three years down the line? What would be my uh, rights to actually claim that domain since I have the trademark? Theoretically, and, and I guess the, the the first question there was about you know speculation and you know, this in dot com and the comparisons and stuff like that. And I think the thing that I would uh, I would encourage everyone to keep in mind is that this is very early technology, and that was probably true for dot com and some of this other stuff as well. But like that stuff did not happen quickly. Like we're looking back on it now and saying, oh yeah, dot com is big, but you know dot com grew incrementally for many, many years. So I think it's very important to realize that these tools are very early uh, and that people should not get it. People should not get ahead of themselves in terms of their expect expectations of where it's at. And, I'm ha and I'll talk very, very specifically, and I'm sure we'll get there as we, as we go about where I think the technology is at, you know, say over the next year versus long term. Uh, in, in terms of the, the trademark stuff, uh, the way that we're viewing it is uh, we're look we looked at the way that the traditional DNS industry does this, uh, and they have what's called a sunrise period. Uh, and the main goal of the sunrise period uh, is to announce and inform trademark holders that a new domain extension is launching to give them the opportunity to take steps towards brand protection. And so during that phase, you also often do pre-orders. So that's what we're doing right now. Uh, we're in our sunrise period as well. Uh, there's an international trademark organization called INTA, uh, and we have applied and made an official announcement. Even though we're not part of the traditional DNS industry, we're still going through that form to announce it uh, to the trademark holders to try to get them to claim them. During the pre-order phase, if anybody who bought a trademark domain, uh, if a trademark holder comes and proves, comes to us and proves the trademark, we will refund the person and sell that domain to the trademark holder. And uh, what is that... Uh... Sorry? Sorry, no, no, go on. Sorry, uh, I, I think it's uh, I'm getting a bit of lagging here. Uh, once the contract is live, uh, then there's nothing we can do because uh, the domains are on, are, are, are on the blockchain and the domain asset is inside of your wallet. And based on the security model, uh, no one can move that other than you with your private keys. And that's critical for the accessible function. So there can be no a uh, third party who can compel it. Sue you and say, you are forced to hand over your property? Sure, a court can sue you or a court can compel you to hand over your Bitcoin right now. Um, this is no different than that, 
but can is there a third party who can move it around? No. In the traditional world, GoDaddy is a custodian, and they can just move the domain. That can't happen here. Okay, so despite the fact that we are buying the domain from you guys, um, you are not going to be in any control, and you are not being um, able to forcefully uh, make any changes. Right now, during the pre-order phase, I would say it's fair to say you're buying the domain from us. Once it's on chain, you're really buying the domain from a contract, you know, and we can't interfere. You know, if you go to the command line and you interact directly with the blockchain, we can't interfere with anybody buying or buying buying domains. That's you know, so that's and and again, that that's by design. So now it's a, a good uh, time to mention the fact that. Um, being um, based on the blockchain and uh, via a smart contract, it is in fact censorship resistance, resistant, isn't it? This is basically what we are discussing here. So once you have that domain, nobody can actually force it down or even um, control your content or anything like that. Even though uh, you will still have to have a hosting service and in regards to content, I suspect the hosting service can actually have some sort of a intermediary function. Is that correct? Am I right in this, in assuming that? Uh, absolutely. And that's why a critical piece of the infrastructure is a decentralized web builder that will enable you to build websites on top of IPFS or other decentralized storage networks. Uh, and this is that we are working on in 2019. And the goal will be to make it so you can have at least uh, a simplified form of uh, text-based websites that you'll be able to spin up very easily where storage will be on uh, decentralized storage. So, and those are the two key censorship points. Yeah, I mean, this is a, a very important point because I wouldn't expect a um, fully decentralized hosting service based on, on blockchain because that would be impossible to sustain. Uh, I mean, a blockchain cannot be um, having uh, terabytes and terabytes of, of data and, and be uh, securely uh, distributed, uh, decentralized and distributed. So um, you are talking about a simple text-based type of uh, service that would probably be more like a very simple version of your website for things that you really want to keep in terms of um, information and then for a more um, complicated websites, HTML and everything, that will have to be a standard hosting service in you know the, the ones that we're currently using. No, no, we're saying that what we that basically there's there's two pieces. There's uh, the blockchain, there's the domain, and the domain is just an asset. Uh, and then there's the content. And so the domain lives on the blockchain. Content doesn't need to be on the blockchain, so content is going to be on a decentralized storage network. And all that really is is a, is a voluntary it's a protocol uh, for computers to voluntarily offer uh, storage. So it's basically like Amazon Web Services, uh, but decentralized. And and right now the network is mostly being done through voluntary nodes. Like most people, there's not a great marketplace around it yet. So there are some pieces uh, that need to be worked on. Um, but we intend to work on it uh, to make it so you will be able to pay for a uh, decentralized hosting service. And what will happen is, is that you will pay uh, a fee to uh, most likely multiple parties to host your content, and then uh, they won't. They uh, they it will be encrypted, and they will take no position on what the content is, and uh, it won't. It can't be censored. I see. So we are talking about uh, a fully uh, decentralized hosting for your website, for all of your content, not not a simplified version, which is what I got in the at first. Interesting. Well, internet. Uh, we're going to do an entirely separate internet, and the reason why is because the old one's broken. The old one is a completely centralized place. Uh, it is not safe for users, and it's not safe for our data. And so we're going to rewind the clock too. That's the reason why I was talking about a text-based website. Because for those of for, you, for those of you in your audience who were around back in like say 1996 and were trying to build on like GeoCities, that's more like where we're at. 
we're basically back. To, we're basically going to rewind the clock, but we're going to give you a new set of features, which is that when you post this content, no one can take it down but you. So all of a sudden, you have your payments and your website in the same. So you have these new features, and that's what you get. Uh, how to build like Netflix on decentralized on a decentralized hosting system that could take a very long time. It's going to take a while to get to that stuff, but we don't we don't need that yet. Yeah, actually, uh, the GeoCities is a good example because my first website was built on GeoCities, so I know what you mean. It is, yeah, it is a much more simplified version of what we have, uh, the websites that we currently have today. Um, but uh, still fully functional and uh, with enough content in there. Uh, apart from videos, as you mentioned, uh, it will take much longer to upload music and videos onto a blockchain, isn't it? The next question would be, um, is there any particular advantage on getting a .zil domain and uh, what is that? I know some people are asking if you get that, uh, if I secure my name today with .zil and later on we start getting other extensions available like .xrp or .ltc, .btc, uh, would we have a sort of a first movers a bit advantage to, to get to secure those domain names as well? Or is that not really related because they might be offered by completely different uh, entities and, and companies, not really you? you. Uh, I think um, if it were us, some there something along those lines would be uh, would be something that you know that would be what we would like to pursue. Uh, if it were somebody else, no, that would potentially be uh, a competitive a competitive service. Uh, there have been other attempts before. Uh, I think that the biggest thing that we're doing that is different is we are cryptocurrency agnostic. We are trying to build tools for all cryptocurrencies, and we're actually trying to build tools to get rid of this concept of addresses in general. Just like what the DNS system did on top of IP addresses, that launched the consumer internet. The time in which search existed, search existed because uh, you had nicknames for IP addresses. If you just had the IP addresses, how could you search? How could you tell your friends to go to a website? So like, that, that. Yeah, let, let me just interject here. So basically, we're talking about the DNS domain name service system that we currently have in place, which uh, in the beginning, websites were just having the IP addresses and uh, it was very difficult to be searching for anything because it was just numbers and dots like uh, 1.980 you know whatever whatever so every every website has an IP address and what the domain name service did is uh, allocate humanly readable names to these uh, IP addresses and um, you are part of that uh, uh, DNS international mapping system or are you separate? Totally separate. We're a separate route. Okay. And the reason we're a separate route is because that system is a centralized system. It exists on a centralized registry. It has custodians, and the custodians are uh, companies like GoDaddy and Google Domains and others. And if somebody doesn't like what you're doing with your domain, they take it from you. Okay, and um, and could you not be forced to be compliant with uh, certain regulations in uh, in different countries and stuff, or are you able to be completely independent? Who? who? Um, well, by the powers that guard uh, the internet, which is, I believe, uh, there are about uh, two or three companies in America that are mainly responsible for. Um, controlling internet traffic and, and uh, DNS services and things like that, and not controlling but regulating, let's say? I don't know who you mean exactly, but these are alternate routes anyway, so these don't rely on uh, DNS. Um, all, right. you're doing is, all you're doing is, is you're having browsers, and browsers are going and looking up on the blockchain and saying, oh, oh this domain is associated with this content and then it points to a specific location for that content. So uh, it doesn't require the regular internet at all, it just goes around it. Right. And um, as far as I know, um, you do not require um, personal data when someone is registering for a domain. Um, 
basically there is no um, name address or anything else that you need to provide is that that this is for the moment i don't know is that going to continue like that or is there going to be more information required when people are setting up domain names uh from our perspective there uh if you're like a an account user for us like you know for example like to create an account with us like you have an email address so we have that information um the uh, you will interact directly with the contract, you know, if you want to. So you will always have that, um, which is completely, you know, essentially as if like unstoppable domains doesn't even exist. You just interact directly with the contract on the blockchain. So you can always do that. Um, kind of no matter what, no matter what we do. But no, I don't see any why we would care. We don't want necessarily to associate your name with a domain like the Who Is system. Um, if you wanted to put your name associated with a domain, you have the right to do that and you can just write that information in the blockchain. Um, but we would not want to require that. We would want to just leave that as well. Yeah, well, this is very important to note because the Who is system is actually, I mean, every time I register a domain and I do not uh, pay extra for the security, you know, for my information to be private. I start getting calls and emails from all kinds of people, uh, you know, promoting all kinds of stuff related to uh, websites and to website building or hosting or all of that stuff. And uh, it could be rather annoying because I have registered a number of domains and only two of my domains that are official, I, I have the security option and, and I'm paying extra for it. But I registered a few other domains just to use them for little things and I didn't really want to be uh, getting that security security option and I ended up with a lot of spam. We're talking like endless spam calls and messages and everything. So it's it's good to point out that with uh, unstoppable domains, you do not have to provide your phone number, address or any of that. You can if you want to, but you're not required. Uh, and the next thing I want to ask you is right now, it's a very low price for most of the domain names. You're paying $10 and that is for two years, which means that it's basically um, five dollars per year. Is that price going to maintain being at, at around that five dollars range, or do you anticipate it going up as your uh, services progress and as you get more popular and and more users and everything? Um, I it may be that it will bifurcate a little bit just because we have this idea of trying to. Uh, get consumers domains for as cheap as possible even free if we can um versus businesses uh that may pay so uh there's a couple of different models that we've discussed but generally speaking i think the where, where we're at is uh is working uh the thing that we want to do more of actually is get consumers domains for free right um, this is great. We think that something, something is very different. Uh, something that's very different about blockchain domains versus uh, versus uh, uh, regular domains is that we have this consumer use case too. Like you, you should have your name in order to pay and get paid, in order to even transfer money, you know, to and from yourself, you know, across exchanges and wallets and things like that without having to deal with the addresses. So everyone needs one. You know, there's you know there's 300 million regular domains. There could be three billion of these. Right. And um, I know that uh, some of my fellow YouTubers mentioned how once you buy that domain, it is yours, you own it and you're not exactly renting it. But uh, let's make it clear. So we are paying um, a subscription for that domain name every year, isn't it? But you're paying it directly to the contract. We're still not. We still can't. We're still not interfering with that with that process. So I know this is strange, but it, it's actually a, it's an on blockchain subscription, and it's based on uh, it's based on block time. So it's essentially based on the based on the estimate of how much time how long it takes uh, for blocks to process. In terms of um, connecting your current, I mean, you are able to uh, transfer domain names from other services, or not really, because you are a separate service from the current DNS system. Uh, how how does that work? Uh, yeah, they're separate. They're they function very differently. Uh, the way that the current system works is uh, they have custodians 
which are actually really more like permission nodes, uh, permission writers uh, to this centralized registry. And so you would need to go and get a license uh, approved with ICANN to be a registrar uh, to write to the registry. And that's how you would transfer domains. And uh, that's not very interesting for us. Yeah. You don't, you don't need any of the permissions or any of those approvers or there's all kinds of humans taking all kinds of opinions on all kinds of things throughout that process. And um, on the blockchain, it's really just, you know, you build a technology that works, you integrate it uh, with the, you know, the apps that people are using and then people can use it. Okay. Well, um, and this is all very exciting and, um, and that, that's definitely uh, the first uh, decentralized blockchain based uh, domain name uh, service that I hear about. Um, I know you mentioned that .f was already started uh, previously, but uh, it's not really been put to practice as far as I know. And um, did you say you're going to be bringing different extensions later on? Or is that not yet uh, in, in your roadmap? Uh, there, there, there may be announcements coming soon in this, uh, in, in this area, but um, yeah, announcements coming soon. Okay, so you, you don't want to say yes, uh, but hopefully, yes. Um, I mean, I'm mainly asking because a few people responded that .zil doesn't really sound as cool as, um, you know, the .com or .info and uh, you know .net, all of the ones that we are already accustomed to, and um, and I know that uh, it would probably take a little bit of time for this to kind of get stuck and and for people to get used to it. But uh, I mean, so it's for pretty much every new domain extension that people are not familiar with. Uh, where do you see .zil domains going in the next five years? Uh, I see them getting into uh, the major wallets that people are using, and I see them getting into uh, extensions and browsers that the crypto community are using so that people are going to websites. Uh, there's already, uh, I, I, I think the key thing here is, and part of the reason why we were excited about Zillica, and you asked this initially, uh, is because they have a they have a scalable blockchain uh, and they're able to process a lot of transactions per second and that's really valuable. Uh, but the users aren't even really going to care. They're just going to pay in whatever currency they want. And so this is really just the fact that we chose that is really just a detail uh, that's more consideration for us and our integration partners than it is for users. Uh, if we, if you had a blockchain domain on two or three different blockchains, um, but it was built by us, I don't know that you would know the difference between them. Right. So, um, when is your st service going live? I know that it's currently still in pre-launch, and uh, you're able to reserve domain names. You're able to already pay for them, but you're not uh, really able to start using them. And um, also, you have a um, auction happening for some of the domain names. So um, when are we expecting this to go live? And uh, tell us a little bit also about the auction. So in June, uh, and they'll happen essentially at the same time. So the contract will go live. Uh, and so the domains will be usable. And then uh, you the auction will start. And the way that it will work is uh, that it's basically, uh, it's, it's like an eBay style auction uh, where bids are public. And you would bid. Uh, you have to bid uh, X percentage higher than the previous bid, uh, and the auction resolves in the amount of time that it takes. But the goal is for it to go for something like six to six to eight weeks. Right. The cool thing, and the thing that's going to be new here is that uh, this is going to be a public on-chain auction, where you will be able to see and track all of the bids. Anybody can bid, but also anybody can watch. Uh, and I'm not sure, uh, I, we're not aware of another place where that's happened uh, yet, but if, if, if somebody can find one, let, let us know, or maybe we can learn from them. So we're talking about possibly the first blockchain-based uh, auction here. So .eth did one as well, but what they did is they did what's called a Vickery auction, where bids are, 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 are essentially hidden, 
Uh, and so the prices were hidden and the information was hidden. Uh, so people weren't able to track it. People weren't able to engage. In fact, most people don't even know uh, which domains were sold because the domains were hashed. So it was just kind of not really, uh, it was basically a prototype, um, but it was not really a, a, a commercial approach uh, to launching a domain extension. And that was sort of what, what we were trying to, to, to bring to this. Uh, and we looked at the way the traditional industry does it, and there are a lot of registry companies that have been very successful at this, uh, even in this sort of, you know, this older market. And uh, we're trying to kind of take that uh, marketing and distribution approach uh, to make sure that we get domains in the hands of a lot of people, because that's really been the, the key historically, is uh, you need to get hundreds of thousands of people using using them, and then that will go and continue to spread out. So that's that's part of the reason why we do these things, why we do the pre-order, why we do the marketing around the trademark holders, why we do the auction, why we do why why we're doing these things, because we're trying to get the a certain number of users across a certain geography. Uh, and that's what's going to make this thing catch on. Because I know, I know that, that that's kind of what people are asking: like why, you know, how is this actually going to happen? Uh, and that's how. Lots of people are going to hear about it, and lots of people are going to try it. Um, you know, we'll we'll be, you know, we're kind of putting out a lot of other a lot of other announcements over the next few weeks. So I would you know, recommend you know following what we're doing on uh, Twitter and Telegram. Yes, I mean, I'm going to have all, all of the links in the description box below, guys, so you can check out there. Uh, the link for the website will be there and uh, Twitter and Telegram. These are the main two channels uh, for you to communicate with the community. And um, the community is growing, by the way. I noticed that you're getting quite a lot of eyeballs, both on Twitter and Telegram. So this is good. And uh, we're all very excited to see, you know, how is that going to work? Because of course, all of us uh, crypto enthusiasts and blockchain fans, of course, we want to see more user adoption and, and more usability of this, um, of the technology and all of these services so that we can actually finally see a, you know, the whole thing going mainstream. So um, any kind of new use case is welcomed by the community. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of people are very excited about this domain name service. Uh, hopefully not only for speculative uh, reasons. Uh, I know that many people want to buy all these trademark names and maybe sell them for thousands of dollars later on. I guess that could be quite possible. But um, for me, it, really, the, the key point here is um, usability and the fact that you're offering a very simplified service for people to be able to send crypto to one another without having to go through the you know complicated wallets uh, in the alphanumerical type of uh, private key and uh, public key based address system which we currently have so this this is what really attracted me to your service and uh, also the fact that uh, having a censorship resistant website you know it's something that even uh, you said later on with the hosting that would be available you know, being able to have my videos or my content in general, uh, not uh, being uh, able to be censored. That is important because we've seen a lot of um, YouTubers that start getting their video traffic censored, you know, videos not getting displayed to uh, as wide audience as before, simply because YouTube is uh, a platform that is centralized and can control things like that. So, you know, people uh, do get censored a lot. And, uh, and this is, this is why crypto was born in the first place, censorship resistance. Right, well, thank you, Brad, for joining me today and uh, for your time. And uh, hopefully we're going to do another follow up on this at some point when uh, there is new development and uh, we can address some more questions. Guys, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments box down and uh, don't forget to give me the likes or dislikes. It's both, well, both is welcome. Subscribe to this channel and uh, watch out for more great content coming your way. Thank you, Brad.